Hello and welcome to another episode of the Raw Impressions podcast. Okay. That was quick. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying out a new... It's the best we could do. A new MC vibe this week. I'm looking at myself and now I'm looking at you. We are recording ourselves on our <laughs> laptops and so we're back, you guys. We're doing what we're supposed to do, which is <sighs> capture ourselves speaking while we do our podcast. Okay. It's the video element yeah. that's so important, they say. They say, yep. So, hi. Hi. It's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. For us, so this pod will be coming out on Thursday, and uh, we're, should I say the, the the roof news that we're processing, or that we're, oh, yeah. we're thinking about? Domestic, a little domestic newsflash. A little news domestic flash. news flash. I mean, people, you're not, maybe not as uh, important to other people as it is to us. It's kind of monumental. It's kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we Probably had a, only yeah. something you do once in your lifetime, maybe? I hope so. I hope so, too. Right. Is our roof, we need a new roof. Our roof is fucked. It's actually terrible. <laughs> it's in really bad shape. <laughs> the uh, people who lived here before did a really bad thing. So I set up the, the attic. I set it up for John Davis and I to practice. It yeah. ended up being too cold to practice, but we went up there initially. Yeah. And I saw huge drips coming from the, the center of the ceiling of the attic, dripping huge drops directly onto an old folk implosion record. Ugh. Right onto it. And then right next to my, my actual like, good guitars, because I put the, my good guitars towards the middle of the attic, thinking that that would be the place that they wouldn't get leaked on by the roof. Because we do have a couple of other small leaks that I've been managing over the years with buckets. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's light, and I feel like ah, there's no damage here. In the I, I've been doing it, but this is a this was a fucking leak. This was a big ass drops. Boof, but I think I caught it right when it was really happening, so we averted any like real water damage. Yeah, we did. So good we, job. You know, good the timing for, was good very. For us. I mean, once again, it's one of those things you find out. It's it's bad news, but mm -hmm. we found it out at a good time. True. So. We had someone, we had a, we had a, a man come from Westfield, Massachusetts mm -hmm. today. Westfield is where I, where I spent my teen uh, years, yeah, my developmental year from the age of 12 until 18, 19. Yeah. With a little bit of maybe 20, 21 in there, <laughs> sprinkled in there. Yeah. You know, yep. when I went back home here and there. Yeah. So yeah, we need a new roof and whoever whoever did the last roof did a really stupid job and our guy, bless him, was trying to say it in the most, you know, kind way. He was like, How do I put this? It's it's not right. That's what I'll say. It's not right. And I'm like, mm, mm-hmm. Mm. It's not right. So they're going to have to make it right. And I, we're going to have to pay. We're going to have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Hmm. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, a good, thing, so? a good thing is I got a, a relatively busy year coming up. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> relatively busy. Uh, Hopefully it'll all work out. Yeah. The year of the roof. The year of the roof. Last year, what was last year? Last year, actually, we just the other day, um, you asked me, like, what are we, I mean, what are we going to do? What improvement? Because we have to make some, imp we live in an old fucking house. I mean, yes. it's not as old as some in this neighborhood. We live, uh, we live around houses from the 1700s, the 1800s. Our house is, is 1894, I believe. 1894. Mm. So it's, it's one of the, it's one of the babies on the block, really. It's one of the younger buildings, sort mm. of, um, so, but, but just the other day you were like, what are we, what do we have to do? Cause our windows are fucked. Um, the, the front doors, the swinging front door is fucked. Mm -hmm. The deck is fucked. Mm -hmm. You know, homeowning, the homeowner stuff here, right? Mm -hmm. This is home possibly have like a whole colony of chipmunks living in our walls. We definitely got some congregation of, of, of rodents mm -hmm. cause they all kind of party and shit all over this one spot in the attic. <laughs> Luckily, there's no leak there either. While well, they do it, it's dry there for them. Good for them. They haven't. 
They just love that pink rug up there. They, they just, love it. They, it's like they circle up and they just take a big shit those, together. <laughs> I don't know why, they have but like, like shitting parties. It's, it's their toilet. It's their toilet. They've deemed that pink rug their toilet in the attic. And I will be taking the uh, mattress topper that's sitting next to that. I'm going to take that to the, to the transfer station. Uh-huh. <laughs> We've talked about the transfer station before, but um, that mattress topper needs to. Uh, it's going because you don't yeah. want to ever give it to anyone mm-hmm. or anyone to be. I mean, here's our mouse dropping uh, mattress topper. Nope, nope. You don't do that. You don't do that to people. So, yep. <laughs> it's active in the Barlow house. There's there's things there's things happening. I do remember uh we we've, we've also had birds living in the vent. Oh, they're um, still there. I I, they, I know they I seem heard relatively them. contained. Yeah. And I don't they think they nest in this vent for a bathroom. None of their detritus is coming into our bathroom. <laughs> As far as I know. As far as we know. You know there and, could and, be like a huge pile of shit, like just the above fan, the well, vent. Well, the, the vent blows up. Uh-huh. So hopefully... It is still blowing up. It is still. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they mm. maybe they just... They're starlings. Maybe they clean up after themselves. Who knows? Hmm. Mm. Starlings, the clean bird, they I say. I don't know. Remember when we found a starling in our wall? <laughs> No, I don't remember that. <laughs> we have these... I thought that uh, was a squirrel. No, that was another rodent. We don't know what it was that died in the wall behind the stereo system. Remember that? This is back when... Oh, I remember that. That Remember when... Okay, so our former cat, Bob, was still alive when we lived here. And uh, Bob was a gal. Bob's a girl. Was a girl. And she was quite a cool cat. And we were in our living room one night and I heard scratching and I was like, Bob, I immediately went to scold her, which of course, you know, she wasn't actually a big scratching cat. So, but of course that's your instinct to just, you know, you scold the cat, like, Bob, stop scratching. And as I said it, I kind of like leaned over to see where she was scratching because it sounded like it was coming from the other room. And then I looked down and she was just sitting there right by my feet quietly, like, just like, geez, mom gotta throw me under the bus i'm right here Hmm. and i was like oh shit where'd that scratching come from then and so then you and i went over to investigate and we heard the don't you remember that the thing was still alive so many pieces of my past are fading (laughs) hi get ready for um a new a new segment on the raw and precious podcast this is Lou's depressing journals. Um, Lou feels that it would be in some way cathartic for him to read from one of the many sort of fragmented, the fragmented thoughts of his (laughs) slightly younger self or old enough to know better self, for sure. Um, This, okay, this is the um, also, a uh, continuation of our dear diary. Oh, journals. oh, yeah. Adele, Adele, me, Adele should choose. Um, I want the brown, the middle brown one. Yeah, that one. Brown one. Yep. Okay, because I like the pattern paper on it. Oh my gosh, you're you're gonna do this? You're gonna just gonna raw dog that that's, journal? That's what happens when that's this, scary. This, this um, segment. I I would do some mm. pre I'm not doing that. This is the i I'm going out on a ledge a little bit here on the Raw Impressions podcast. Okay. I'm reading right now, right away. Gender conflict. Honestly captured your heart. Sharing your nature, making you laugh. Charisma is it. Knowing what to say, making you laugh. Natural, catchy, cute with a mystery. Follow while you can. There could be someone for every change. Are you afraid of time? The weather... The silent wrinkles and fades under your skin. Are you afraid of time? It's taken forever, but we finally arrived. And under your skin, under the skin, 
I'm blind. A mission filtered. Oh my gosh. What the hell does that mean? Your diary reads like a poem. You're a poet. Oh. There's a line. Friendly neglect no longer protects my heart. I used that in a song. You did? What song is that from again? Um, Lazy Mind. Right. From from Brace from the Brace Wave. The, wave. the first out yeah, that's so this this line came I don't know when this book is from. I don't know when this journal was done. No dates? No, there's no I don't date anything. I almost aggressively don't Just date try, things. It's like almost like trying to be incognito. Yeah, yeah. My, I make it I try to make I really made That's so coded. It's like coded. I know I did poems. Uh, Coded poems. I rarely make journals where I'm like, this is what I did today, and then I did this. I, I, they're always kind of coded and like almost in these kind of awkward rhymes. Hmm. Oh, and then, uh, this is back. <laughs> Are you afraid of time? Huh. I never expected a war. Oh. Oh. When you feel ignored, you draw that old line. I know you're afraid of time. Held on. It's a reflex. I thought about thinking it through. Double wide, double life. I don't, I don't learn lessons. I choose them. We choose to listen. Powder keg. Thick and delicious. Hold. I thought about thinking it through. Well, that, wasn't, that wasn't really depressing. Ooh, wasn't, it was just intense. I felt like I was on the edge of something there the whole time. Like, what, what's going to happen next? Hmm. Oh my gosh. And something about time. What was it? Are you afraid of time? Are you afraid of time? Wow. That sounds like the name of an <gasps> album. What? Whoa. Oh, God. Okay, this dates it. You gave me something I need to leave alone. You gave, you gave me something I want and turned my heart to stone. This is from 1998. That's lyrics from the, of One Part Lullaby. Wow. So I pulled lines from this. So this is actually... So there's a line in here that I ended up using almost 10 years later. <laughs> oh my <laughs> or, gosh, yeah. Or was I working on that song back then? I don't know. I guess it's weird. I guess, yeah, this is a... Hmm. Yeah, the song Someone You Love is actually... And that that's fitting because John Davis was just here. Folk implosion. Yeah, and we were just relearning that song. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I really I like that song. That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> that song is one of... That's a that's a really intense song. Yeah, it's one of my... It's one of my... Uh, the song has a little bit of a fighting spirit when much of what I wrote around this period of time and much of what I've written is largely about sort of resignation or accepting you know being accepting or allowing my boundaries to be crossed it's generally about that it's rarely do i make a boundary in a song and that song is like i don't want to be someone you love it was a very strong and true sentiment of course i didn't follow through on it back then when i wrote it but it did make me it did empower me briefly when i recorded that song it, it was a little bit of a, a bright light in a dark time i'm actually impressed that you kept it because you're right it doesn't really fit in with your storylines that you generally you know gravitate toward in your songs where there's a lot more of like um self blame or something i don't know do you know what i mean yeah but like this is more just like yeah i don't want that it's really rare <laughs> That's super rare. It's very unlike you. That's so true. unlike me. Mm, it's unlike you in real life too. Not just in song life. It's good that my song life does actually reflect in some way. And maybe it's not good. Is it good that it reflects my real life, my song life? I think it is. It means that it means I'm genuine. Mm. Right? Mm. Am I genuine? Yes, I think you're genuine. Thanks, Adele. <laughs> you're welcome, Lou. <laughs> I think you are also genuine, and that, that's mm. uh, that's something that I need to get in my life. Uh, that's something I need to put in I my am life. Genuinely, I needed that sensitive. That's what I am. I'm very sensitive. I was thinking about 
that the other day and how I've told you this before, but like my high school guidance counselor told me I was overly sensitive and I was, it's, you hear that stuff and I, and I know I'm like a older woman, but it is hard to shake sometimes like that one line you hear and you go, ouch. It just echoes through your, your I think life. it's also because he said it with, it, it just seemed like disdain, you know, and he was sort of like not really paying attention and sort of just sort of set it off the cuff while like kind of spinning in his little chair in his office and, <laughs> and, you know, um, his little moment, he probably maybe he never thought of again. Right. But then I was always like, gosh, I'm, I'm, am I overly sensitive? Hmm. You know? And I've now seen, of course, the, in the age of knowledge that we're in and information with like TikTok and Instagram videos and therapists and stuff like that out there being like, hey, did you know that some people are actually overly sensitive and that's okay. And that's a real thing. And it's blah, a blah, blah, blah. Mm. It's kind of a talent. It was oversensitivity. Yeah. You know. And uh, some of the most insensitive people can also be overly sensitive. <laughs> it's found, true. It's true. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting it's thing. True. Yeah, I've noticed that a lot. Am I? Am I insensitive? I don't think you're insensitive. No. Hmm. Like ever. Hmm. You you consider what you say. Hmm. Hmm. Sometimes you draw some hard lines about things. So you do have boundaries. Yeah. And you do have common sense. Right. That you exercise. Mm-hmm. You actually have common sense that you apply to your life. Mm-hmm. Um, in my case, I, I do believe I have common sense. Do I apply it in my life? Mm-hmm. Have I applied it in my life? Not a lot. Mm-hmm. Not a lot. Mm-hmm. Well... Yeah. And that's what I was, I was sort of expecting to come upon that when I was reading my, I was like, well, I'll do this random journal thing and then I'll end up reading something really, I, I thought I would get in, I mean, cause there's a lot, a lot of, a lot of these journals are, are full of like just, um, screeds against my, against myself. Just these, just like where I'm like, I just, I'm on a path of just putting myself down or explaining my limitations. And not to say that I was hoping that I would come upon something like that. <laughs> I'm kind of glad that I didn't. Yeah. And then I, I'm also glad that I saw the, the germ of what is one of my, you know, someone you love that song. For the yeah, it's because, all meant to be. You, weird. you were just rehearsing it and now you've yep. found the journal and That's weird. John was here. Wow. I didn't, I really don't know when these, like they're not dated, hmm. you know, they're not dated. They're just, mm-hmm. but, hmm. and they're full, which Are is they? rare. It's very, very rare to fill a journal these days. I, oh my gosh, I almost never fill a journal anymore at all. All. Mm. It's like I have so many barely started journals. I can't stop starting them and then I don't finish them. Only when I was really a lot younger, like in high school and then in my early 20s, did I really fill a journal, mm. like start to finish, fill it. But I also filled it with just like a lot of writing exercises because I was doing writing prompts from writing down the bones, the Natalie Goldberg oh. uh, book. Cause I just love, love her books and I love her writing and she writes a lot about how to write. So anyway, uh, I would mix like kind of my personal journals with her writing prompt exercises. So it was kind of easy to like fill a whole journal then, mm-hmm. you know, too. And I think it was her, she used to say like, don't, I believe I I think she used to say like, don't buy a journal that's too precious or something, just buy like a notebook or something. So you're not worried about trying to fill it with like good thoughts or important thoughts or like poems or, you know, yeah, like these, yeah, it's like a composition book. Yeah, these exactly. Were my main, these were just kind something of my main, like that. main things for a long, long time. And I do feel that pressure when I have a nice journal because I'm drawn to beautiful things. I do feel like, Oh God, what am I now tasked with filling this beautiful journal? I, I really like. I had some, 
I had uh, I had a, a series of journals that were made by these. I think they were Latvian Lithuanian. brothers in Silver Lake. Mm. What were they called? They had this. There was two of them, and they looked as if they were like Russian monks. Where were they? They were in Silver Lake, and they were on. Hi- they had. A, I think they had a shop on Hyperion. Sunset but they made these beautifully south. bound oh. journals. Do you see that? How yeah. beautiful that is! It's beautiful. Baltic. It w- Baltic it was, it, it was the, store, the name of the store was the Baltic. Oh, yes. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Oh my God. The Baltic Brothers. And, right. And they really tall, oh, really interesting wild. looking guys. I wonder if that store is still there. Baltic what was they called? But I, I, I oh, really, I, I like, did really. When I bought that that journal, I was like, I'm gonna fill it, and I did, and I really. It's so loved. It looks gorgeous. And this is one of the scariest journals I've made. I made it while I was in the depths of some pretty heavy, like that picture. There's a picture of that little sketch drawing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it was not a good time. Dark times. <laughs> and it's here. The, some of the pages, some of the stuff in here is so dark that I went through and I put duct tape over the pages. So I could Recently? never. Recently? No, no. Like back then, this was just in, this was in the midst of like, Oof. Super hardcore times for me, but see how I like, Whoa. see how I, I duct taped them. So I knew, cause I didn't want to get rid of the whole journal, but I duct taped these pages knowing that you can't, if you take off the duct tape, you won't be able to read what's behind it. That is so definitively destroy intense. It. This is a really, this. <laughs> I'm going to duct tape these. Wow. I mean, the journal, you know. Oh, I know. Well, a journal is, is either you know, truth or half truth or nothing. <laughs> Coded. I think Coded for me, I think or... yeah, for me, cause I was always thinking that I, I was always trying to, I'm, it's hard for me to just sit and write sentences because I, mm-hmm. I do try to like, I'm always thinking about internal rhymes. I'm thinking, phrasing, right? I'm thinking about like, the phrasing. I'm yeah. thinking what it would sound like spoken or sung, no matter mm-hmm. what I'm writing about. So it's very hard. That's cool. I it's don't, hard I don't think co- like that at all when I'm writing. <laughs> I don't, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. It's partially like it's a, it's a laziness that I developed really like during high school when I didn't want to write anything and I refuse to write. I refuse to write anything. I barely graduated because I refused to complete any assignment in my senior year. And it was like this this really intense like procrastination um masochistic procrastination is the only way i could put it it was like i had to finish the most basic things because by the time that i reached my senior year i had like my scholastic levels had dropped so much that they were insinuating that i was on drugs or perhaps um had some sort of a disorder and i barely graduated but what I did develop was fragmentary. Hmm. Gosh, I just have to. I'll have to find one of my old journals. You again. gotta find it. It's, it's up. Uh, I, I did. I okay. I hogged this one, but I'll, no, hog away. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That concludes another episode of the Raw Impressions podcast. Um, thanks to Lou and Adele for bearing their souls and. Sharing themselves once again. I'm, I'm fuck it, man. Fuck it, man. All right. See you.